Max Laughlin's story sounds like a movie. A gifted kid takes the stage with a huge idea. A wire pulls energy from the air. AC turned into DC right there. Mentions of Tesla. Name drops of Einstein. Big talk about CERN, then silence. He vanishes from the public eye just as fast as he rose. Years later, he reappears, older, calmer, and claiming he is ready to enter the real world. The question is simple. Is there something real here? Or was it always a story built on wonder and a camera? Let's rewind. Max won attention because he spoke like a young physicist who had already seen the future. He described ambient power, captured from the air, sent down a wire, and rectified into usable electricity. He talked about electrons and parallel universes. He linked the Mandela effect to quantum ideas. He sounded bold and certain. The charisma was real. So was the excitement around him. But the science was hard to pin down. Where were the schematics? Where were the repeatable tests? What happened when someone outside his circle tried to build the device? As the buzz grew, so did the pressure. He was praised as a prodigy. He was asked to explain the universe on stage. That is a rough job for any adult. It is far harder for a teenager. Then he went quiet. No press. No demos. No published results. People wondered if he had been silenced, recruited, or simply burned. In school, Max loved to take apart devices and learn how they worked. He also chased big questions about energy. In his senior year, he worked with a classmate, Luke Jansen, to transform thousands of photos of rock carvings into precise 3D models. The method is called photogrammetry. It is useful in archaeology and conservation. The project ran into simple issues. Delayed gear. No Wi-Fi at the campsite. Heavy processing loads. He framed those setbacks as training for real scientific struggle. Some heard grit. Others heard the theatre. Both can be true. School projects can shape a young scientist. They can also be used to market a narrative. He graduated and talked about studying physics and engineering at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. That track makes sense. It puts a young mind in the lab, under mentors, and inside the grind that turns ideas into data. It also exposes anyone to the reality of research. Dead ends, peer review, reproducibility, boring notes, careful claims. That is where hype goes to live or die. Then came the second act. Max reappeared. He said he was ready to move from theory to proof. He wanted to bring real-world results. Yet the specifics were thin. The language sounded like a teaser reel. Big promises, vague timelines, strong hints, light on methods. That is a red flag in science. Clear claims are measurable. Vague claims are flexible. The former can be tested. The latter can be defended forever. His most famous claims still orbit two themes. The first is energy. Can you extract useful power from the air in a way that beats the limits of known physics? We already harvest energy from the environment. Radio receivers power tiny tags. Thermal gradients run small engines. Solar and wind fill grids. None of that is free energy. All of it follows thermodynamics. If Max's wire is more than a radio trick or an antenna feeding a rectifier, it must show numbers that hold under scrutiny. Power in, power out, efficiency, source, noise, boundary conditions. Independent labs must match the results. Until then, the idea is only a claim. The second theme is reality. Max has said things that lean towards the many worlds view of quantum mechanics. The pitch goes like this. Every electron step spawns parallel universes. Some events bleed into our minds. Shared false memories become the Mandela effect. It sounds wild. It grabs attention. But it mixes three hard fields. Quantum theory explains small things with math and experiments. Cognitive science studies memory, which is messy and full of bias. Metaphysics asks the what is real questions. When you fuse them without data, you get a story, not a result. Even scientists who entertain many worlds do not say your daily choices spin off new universes. As Sean Carroll and others have explained, it's quantum events, not human decisions, that branch outcomes. The idea is not about your serial choice making a new cosmos. It is about math describing measurements consistently. 
That matters, because language that crosses these lines can confuse people into thinking a cool metaphor is a lab finding. Max's name also floats near CERN in online debates. Some posts tie collider runs to odd events in Earth's magnetic field. They ask whether high-energy physics can disturb our planet. The Large Hadron Collider crashes particles. It does not reach the energy scales of solar storms. The worry is understandable, but the bar for evidence is high. If you claim a link, you need timing, a mechanism, and a model that predicts it. If Max wants to lead here, he has to publish or collaborate and let the work be reviewed. Extraordinary risk claims require mechanistic evidence and peer-reviewed analysis. Let's talk about fame. The world loves young geniuses. It loves telling and selling their stories. That spotlight can supercharge a career. It can also warp it. The risk is that the brand grows faster than the method. Audiences reward certainty. Real science rewards doubt. A teen can get stuck performing certainty while learning doubt in private. If they stumble, the crowd is harsh. If they pivot to normal work, the crowd is bored. That cycle is brutal. It explains why some prodigies disappear and then return with tighter control of their message. It may explain part of Max's arc. There is also an ethics thread in his path. His valley of firework aimed to capture and preserve ancient art with digital tools that can aid research and help museums and tribes. It can also slide into monetizing sacred images. Intent and partnership matter. Who owns the scans? Who profits if they are sold? Who decides how they are used? The answers show whether a project is conservation, commerce, or both. A careful scientist can hold the line. A brand might blur it. This tension appears around Max because he blends tech, media, and bold claims in the same persona. So where are we now? Max says he is ready to prove himself. Good. Here is what proof looks like. A device that anyone can build from plans clear diagrams, part numbers, conditions, a set of tests that a third party can repeat without you in the room, a paper that states the claim, the limits, the error bars, and the open questions, a version number that improves as critics find flaws. If his energy wire works beyond known methods, show a stable wattage over a stable interval with controlled inputs and shielded outputs. If the effect appears to draw from ambient RF, show how the device behaves in a Faraday cage. If it draws from temperature differences, map the gradient and the Seebeck coefficients. If it pulls from quantum fluctuations, define the coupling and present a model that yields a measurable prediction. Make it boring, make it measurable, let others break it. If it survives, you have a breakthrough. If he wants to pursue the Mandela effect angle, the path is different. Design blinded experiments on memory with large samples. Pre-register the methods. Separate psychology from physics. If a physics link is proposed, state a mechanism that could, in principle, be detected in the lab. Published in a journal where referees push back. If the result is negative, publish anyway. That is how claims evolve into knowledge. Max's return also prompts a bigger question. How should we treat very young minds with very big ideas? We should be kind. We should be firm. We should celebrate curiosity and protect it from scams, including the ones talented people can run on themselves. We should ask for clarity without cruelty. We should push bold claims through the same narrow gate we use for everyone else. It is not gatekeeping. It is the guardianship of truth. There is a practical way forward for Max that does not require mystique. He can upload design files. He can open his lab notes. He can book time with engineers who enjoy debunking and let them try. He can post results with raw data. He can join a lab and publish the slow way. He can do some of each. If the ideas are real, transparency will only help. If parts are wrong, transparency will fix them. Either result is worth having. There is also a personal way forward. He can talk openly about the weight of early fame. He can explain the gap between the stage and the bench. He can warn other young makers about the lure of grand claims. That would be a gift, no matter what becomes of the wire in the air. Does any of this crush the magic? No. The universe is already strange enough without us stretching it. Quantum rules are weird. Energy flows in surprising ways. Human memory is flawed. 
The real world, studied with care, is more exciting than any performance. If Max's device exists, it will survive the light. If it were a dream, it would fade and the person who dreamed it could still become a strong scientist. Max Laughlin's story is at a turning point. The stage lights are back on. This time, the audience should look past the spotlight and watch the table where the measurements live. That is where truth sits. That is where careers are made. That is where big ideas grow up. In the end, the test is simple. Tangible results, clear evidence, independent checks, if Max brings those, his return will mark the start of something real. If not, it will join a long list of brilliant tales that taught us another lesson. Charisma is not the same as science. Hope is not the same as proof. And proof, once earned, does not need a hype man.